The engineering profession in Wrath of the Lich King Classic, as it was in past expansions, continues to be highly regarded as one of the best, thanks to its fun and unique patterns and new benefits that players receive from it. This video is based on my Wowhead engineering guides for Wrath of the Lich King, which I've linked in the description below. This is to serve as a video companion to my written guides. I'm always open to feedback in ways that I can improve, so don't be a stranger and let me know if anything needs updating. Timestamps are also included below, so feel free to skip around as you see fit. Now, let's get started. So we're seeing all these top professions for Wrath videos, and a lot of them do say engineering is the best. But why? Well, simply put, a major reason for that is the new category called Tinkering, where you can add engineer-only enchants to your gear to increase their stats and provide other incredibly useful effects. To summarize, Tinkers can only be applied to your own gear, they will override any other enchant that you have on that gear, and it's for engineers only. But there's no specialization limits, meaning Gnomish and Goblin Engineers alike can apply these buffs. The following lists all of the Tinkers that will be available to you. Some of them can be learned from any of your Northrend engineering trainers, and the rest are from Timothy Oshenko in Dalaran. Mind Amplification Dish. This is a Helm enchant. It gives plus 45 stamina and a mind control effect. Flex Weave Underlay. This is a Cloak enchant, and it gives plus 23 agility and a slow fall effect. Springy Arakano Weave. This is another Cloak enchant. It gives plus 27 spell power and another slow fall effect. Hand Mounted Pyro Rocket is a glove enchant, and it can give you up to 2,000 fire damage in the form of a rocket. Hyperspeed Accelerators, another glove enchant, plus 340 haste rating for 12 seconds. Reticulated Armor Webbing, another glove enchant, plus 885 armor. Moving on to belts, we've got Frag Belt, where you can throw a Cobalt Frag Bomb. Personal Electromagnetic Pulse Generator, another belt, and it gives a confused mechanical effect. So this kind of reminds me of maybe like a turn undead that paladins have to use on undeads and demons. And finally, Nitro Boost. This is a boot enchant that gives plus 24 critical strike rating and run speed. What other notable items are coming to Engineering and Wrath Classic? Well, let's take a closer look. As in past expansions, crafting engineering items in Wrath requires the usual suspects. Gyromatic micro adjusters, arc light spanners, blacksmith hammers, etc, etc. However, there's a nifty new tool that combines all of those and more in one to save you time and inventory space, and that's the Gnomish Army Knife. The Gnomish Army Knife becomes your all-in-one, quote, gyromatic micro-adjuster, arc light spanner, flint and tinder, blacksmithing hammer, mining pick, and a skinning knife. On top of that, it also has the ability to act as jumper cables, so every 30 minutes, you have a chance to shock a dead player back to life. It does, however, share a cooldown with jumper cables but this is an item that you should definitely get your hands on. So as you can see, just by going over these tinkers really quickly, they are incredibly powerful and can really make a huge difference in your gameplay. Other notable new items coming to engineering include new craftable ammunition, Saronite Razorheads, Mammoth Cutters, Ice Blade Arrows for Gnomish Engineers, and Shadow Rounds for Goblin. Faction-specific mounts, which we're going to go into in a little bit, but we've got the Mech Gineers Chopper and the Mechano Hog. We've got innovative new robots such as Jeeves and Molly, new and improved goggles, which some you can learn from your Northrend trainers and the others from Timothy, our friend in Dalaran. We're also going to go over locations of trainers in a bit too. Ranged weapons and scopes, the armor-plated shotgun, Nezuary 4000, Heartseeker scope, the new tinkering category, which we did just go over, and fun new trinkets such as the wormhole generator to Northrend. So let's change gears a bit, pun intended and discuss other changes coming to engineering. Changes to gas clouds. Another engineering difference between TBC Classic and Wrath is how you interact with gas clouds. Now, if you remember in TBC, engineers are required to have any of the crafted goggles equipped in order to view gas clouds on their minimap. However, in Wrath, goggles are no longer needed. Gas clouds will automatically pop up on your minimap as long as you're an engineer. Players will still have to use the Zap Throttle Moat Extractor to extract the material. But instead of moats in TBC, like Moat of Water or Moat of Fire, you'll now find crystallized items such as crystallized water and crystallized fire. Salvaging Mechanicals A new addition to engineering is the ability to salvage mechanical corpses after they've been killed by players. Consider this the version of skinning for engineers. Salvaging allows you to collect random parts. Some could be gray items to vendor for gold, while others may be actual materials that you need for engineering. 
you never really know what you might find from salvaging. Change your engineering specialization. Engineers may visit Narain Sooth Fancy by Steamweedle Port Tanaris to change their specializations for 150 gold. You won't lose your current engineering skill, and you could switch back and forth between Gnomish and Goblin as many times as you'd like, assuming you're willing to pay 150 gold each time. Step 1. Simply find the book Soothsaying for Dummies located right on the table next to Narain Sooth Fancy. 2. Unlearn your specialization for 150 gold. 3. Read the book again to choose your new specialization. It's as simple as that. Engineering trainers in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Now let's cover where the trainers are located so that you can easily find them once Wrath launches. I'm going to list all the locations for level 375 to 450 trainers in Wrath Classic, divided into Alliance, Horde, and Neutral. Let's start with Alliance Engineering Trainers. Alliance-only engineering trainers are located in the two Alliance cities in Howling Fjord and Borean Tundra. Tisha Longbridge can be found in Valgard of Howling Fjord, and I've got the coordinates listed right here. If you started out in the Borean Tundra of Alliance Keep, you can find Sock Brightbolt right here. Moving over to the Horde side, the Horde-only engineering trainers are also located in the two Horde cities in Howling Fjord and Borean Tundra. Jamesina Waterly is in Vengeance Landing in Howling Fjord, and if you're a Horde who decided to go to the Borean Tundra first, inside Warsong Hold, you could find Chief Engineer Leveni. Now let's look at the neutral engineering trainers. All of the Dalaran profession trainers are neutral. Some of the other trainers can be found in other areas. So we're going to start with Timothy Oshenko. He is in Dalaran. He will give you most of your endgame goggles, schematics, and more. Didi the Wrench is the Goblin Engineer inside Dalaran. Findel Whistlesteam is the Gnomish Engineer in Dalaran. And then we've got Binky Brightgear in Ice Crown, the Argent Tournament Grounds. Which I'm guessing she won't be there right away in Phase 1, but you never know. Notable Engineering Schematics. While most schematics are learned from your trainers, I'm going to cover a few that I've discovered elsewhere in the world. Let's start with the new engineering mounts. For Alliance Engineers, once you're exalted with the Alliance Vanguard, you'll be able to purchase schematic Mechaneer's Chopper. Likewise for the Horde with the Horde Expedition. Both require engineering level 450, and the same materials to craft. 12 Titan Steel Bars, 40 handfuls of Cobalt Bolts, 2 Arctic Furs, 1 Salvaged Iron Golem Part, 8 Goblin Machined Pistons, and 1 Elementium Plated Exhaust Pipe. A neutral vendor schematic you could find is from Brian Landers in Dalaran. He sells the schematic for Titanium Toolbox, a 32-slot engineering bag. A world drop schematic is for Jeeves. It's worth noting that the schematic for Jeeves can drop in a number of places. Library Guardian, for example, is known to drop it outside of Ulduar. These robots can also be salvaged, which gives you another chance to receive the schematic. Otherwise, you may get lucky finding Jeeves in a dungeon or a raid. A notable quest reward schematic requires you to be level 77 and obtain a drop from the aforementioned Library Guardians outside of Ulduar in the Storm Peaks. They could drop the Scrap E access card, starting a quest that will lead you to the schematic for Scrapbot Construction Kit, basically Wrath's version of a repair bot. And finally, Findel Whistlesteam, the Gnomish Engineering Trainer in Dalaran, can teach Gnomish Engineers Gnomish X-Ray Specs, while Didi the Wrench, the Goblin Engineering Trainer in Dalaran, can teach Global Thermal Sapper Charges at level 425 each. And so that wraps up my engineering guide for Wrath of the Lich King. If you want to see any of my other Wrath videos so far, I've got 20 changes coming to Wrath Classic, and a video I made actually three years ago that just hit 10,000 views, and that's how I got the Immortal Achievement title from Naxxramas in original Wrath of the Lich King. So if you're looking for more Wrath content from me, please check out those other two videos in the meantime. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you've subscribed to my channel by hitting that sub button, smash the like button, and be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. To support me and my channel even further, you can become a YouTube member by clicking the join button or by checking out the thanks button below. Thank you again and I hope you have a great day.